Hello everyone and welcome back to some discussion things and this involves the return of the various paradox beasts and paradox swords of justice. For a long time it's been a big worry that we are not going to be able to get access to these Pokemon again, that they are locked away by Game Freak's decision to only give Walking Wake and Iron Leaves from events, the event terror raids, and then they pull out completely. And that Raven Bolt, Iron Crown, and Paradox Entei and Paradox Rakion are just going to be given out from a single static encounter. But, I've actually figured out that this is not the case, that we may not have only a single shot at getting them. Many people weren't able to get the previous ones as they didn't realize you could go and join, you could join an Iron Leaves raid if you played Scarlet. I know a number of people who even are some Pokemon players themselves that didn't realize that was the case. They only told after the fact that they could have joined them and could have gotten them. They thought, it's not my game, they're probably going to prevent me from getting it. And this kind of goes with the entirety of what the Iron Leaves, Walking Wake raids were back then. They were promotional. They were, hey, here's a big hint for the next DLC area. There are more paradoxes. Don't worry. And the way that we figured this out is watching the trailers a few times over, between both trailers that showed off where you battle Iron Crown and Raging Bolt in the wild, they're both encountered in two different arenas. They are not found in the same spot in both locations, meaning either they do the same thing people hate about Generation, uh, Generation 6, where the legendary bird you encounter it and then just runs away immediately and you gotta track it down again, or you can find these in multiple separate areas because there are multiple repeatable encounters. Before we continue on that, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more, comment below your thoughts on this because there's actually a bit more beyond simply just the difference of areas. The bigger part of it is that the Paradox Pokemon are not simply one-offs. Even the Paradox Legendaries of Mirai and Coridon, there's still multiples of them. There is an implication that even Ms. Briar herself has access to one of these legendaries, and we know you own two of them. You own the one that Professor Turo or Professor Sada had, and then the one that game ended them is the other one you have. So there's a potential for a minimum of three present in the game, and at minimum a known two. The reason why they're being marked as single powerful individuals is that they are paradoxes of existing Pokemon that are legendaries. They're still trying to keep the mystique of paradoxes, are they descendants, and are they ancestors of previous Pokemon, when if they showed off, yeah, there was just 20 Raging Bolts just roaming around, it would take away that mystique, it would take away the intrigue. They are not outright stating anything because they want us to figure stuff out, or that's going to be the premise of the DLC, which is a pretty good way of doing things. The other part of it is Pokemon, as time's gone on, has understood locking and restricting players' ability to get certain Pokemon to events, to if you don't do something for two weeks, sorry, sucks to be you. They've understood this is a very bad system. This is why they've made mythical Pokemon much easier to obtain. They're no longer, you can only connect Nintendo Wi-Fi during this three-week period, and if you don't have the game or you're not in Wi-Fi, Sorry, Pokemon like Mew, which will only give it out from e-reader cards for a long time or special events you had to go to in person, they've made accessible in permanent events in-game. Arceus in Legends Arceus, they made it so as long as you have completed the Pokedex in Legends, you can get an Arceus and even Shiny Hunt it in BDSP. Now, they have still locked Mythicals behind some events for certain games. Darkrai, for example, back in BDSP, you could get the member card only during a certain stretch of time, but in Legends, you can still get a Darkrai at any time. So the exclusivity of species is something they want to try to get away from. The ability to get any Pokemon at any time is now becoming a marketable feature of DLCs. There's also that these Pokemon are allowed in competitive. Competitive in the sense of VGC has always restricted mythical Pokemon because of their limited availability. The new Paradoxes, so the Paradox Beast and the Paradox Swords, are going to be legal for VGC. That is the biggest indicator of their permanent availability. Because any Pokemon that has a limited availability window, they have always restricted. It's the reason why Battle Bond Greninja was simply never allowed. You could only get it in a specific stretch of time, 
and beyond that, you could never get it again. It's why if Eternal Flower Floet was ever added to the game, it would also be banned. It's a very player-friendly system for us. As well as for them, it gives them a an easy out for, well, we can make some stories involving some, some new paradoxes and give a little quest for them. Now, they may restrict them to a single individual per game, but if they do restrict to a single individual per game that is not locked to a specific timing event, that means anyone can still get, at bare minimum, one. So this does mean there is a risk of not being able to shiny hunt them, as I know many of us would love to do, but it does still mean you're not going to be screwed. Which, when it comes to, well, they're not going to be static encounters, that you can't sh When it comes to, well, they're not static encounters, because they're just no encounters at all, but the lack of a static encounter implies the hope of shiny hunt ability, which simply doesn't exist, or, well, you can't shiny hunt them because they're static encounters and they're shiny locked, but you get one, I, I would take the, the timeline where I guarantee an encounter that I can reset and get a good nature on and good IVs, rather than, well, you missed the whole thing altogether and you're, you're, you're screwed over. But yeah, those are those are my thoughts. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I am optimistic that it was just promotion, because there was a lot of worry about the DLC for Scarlet and Violet, and Game Freak probably realized they, they need to give us something. You know, the initial performance of Scarlet Violet in a gameplay performance perspective was very poor. We hated terror raids, and there were definitely concerns about a DLC and how it would happen. By giving us the hope that there are more paradoxes, there's a lot more coming, it kept hope alive, which, in a lot of cases, is what games need more than anything. DLC is coming out in less than a week. I look forward to it. We're going to be streaming it when it comes out. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more, there'll be a shiny giveaway in a few weeks. I will see you guys then, and would love to see you in stream. Let's rock and roll up.